for the precious blood of Jesus yes. Christ right. that washes away sin, sickness, and disease. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit, with your words of life and truth, and send us out to overflow on this world, Lord, to bring uh, glory and honor to your name, yes. and blessing to your people, Lord. And thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, good to be here with you again. It's been many years. Uh, do any of you remember me? A few? The Lord was ministering to me while we were worshiping, and I just uh, want to start there. How's that? Uh, as we were worshiping, I, I had uh, several visions, and uh, you know, as, as you know, I'm in Mozambique. I've been there 10 years and, and met many precious people and, and many suffering and hurting people uh, in those 10 years. And so tonight, as we were worshiping, mm, I just saw God. Jesus, you know, I saw him weeping over Jerusalem. Ooh. Ooh. You know, I saw him longing to gather Jerusalem under his wings. Mm. And, uh, and then it went, it, the Lord took me to an, another vision and uh, uh, just showed me him sitting by the well uh, and, and talking to the woman sitting by the well. And uh, he said, if you, if you only knew who it was who was sitting here with you, wouldn't you would have asked him Ask him for living water, and he would have given you living water. Oh, yeah, it yeah. will last for all eternity. Amen. And so I'm thinking, you know, about this and re remembering all I've seen in Mozambique, and and then this vision of uh, some women at a river in Mozambique. Uh, I've seen it many times, you know, women and children and men at the river. Taking a, a, a bath, you know, take, washing themselves, washing their clothes, and uh, and drinking out of the same river, and some even using the restroom in the river. And so, as I'm, the Lord just began to to minister to me, you know, and then I then. Uh, through all, those three visions there, and then, uh, then out of the blue comes this uh, vision, this memory of a, a movie that I've seen in the past. Um, I don't know, maybe some of you have seen it, but Rambo, and I don't remember which one it is, but, but what it was, just let me tell you, was what I saw uh, out of this movie, the Lord brought to my mind again, that uh, he went out to rescue the Vietnam veterans, you know, who were uh, uh, imprisoned there for many, many years. You know, the government sent him out to rescue the Vietnam vet veterans, or at least that's what they told him. That's what they he thought. So he went out there and rescued them uh, and brought them back, even though they denied him to do it. When he was right there... Uh, the, the helicopter had come back to pick them up and he was there and he had all these veterans that he had rescued uh, from the, the Vietnam uh, prison camps and then when they saw that he actually had them and they reported it back to the base camp uh, they said no 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 <laughs> no you can't do that leave him there and come back and so they actually, they actually left him there and those Vietnam vets there uh, to be put back in, in the prison, into the, the camp. And so uh, Rambo, as he was being tortured there, at, they captured him and as he was being tortured, uh, he was, they made him call the headquarters and talk to the chief guy who had said, no, leave Rambo there, forget him. He's, you know, forget all of them. Uh, we were just supposed to be taking pictures. And... Uh, so Rambo um, gripped the, the microphone as he was talking to the guy and said, I'm coming to get you, you know? And so, you know, maybe some of you know the story. And, and he got back and he brought all those uh, refugees, the, the, the ones who had been imprisoned, uh, the soldiers in prison in Vietnam, he brought them back with him. And so when he came in, he was obviously angry and he wrapped uh, uh 
mm, he got a, a, a machine gun and he wrapped the ammunition around his arms and he went in and, and uh, he was tearing the place apart. All of the technology, all of the stuff from the government that they had used, sending him to go and supposedly do this mission and yet fail to do the mission. They made him fail to do the mission and he... And so he came in there and he scared the guy half to death and he grabbed him and threw him on the desk and he took out his knife and he slammed the knife into the desk and said, there, and, and the guy thought he was going to kill him and he said, they're out there. There's more of them and you know it and you know where they're at. Go and get them. And so the Lord ministered to my heart, you know. They're out there. Yes. They're out there. Yes. We know where they're at. We can go get them. Yes. We've not been given a mission to fail. The government of God is on our side. The government of God will go with us, will empower us, will, will give us all that we need and will not recall us and bring us back. The government of God says, go and get them. I wept for them and I remember... You know, and then the Lord brought me back to Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. And I'm telling you, He's weeping over Jerusalem. He's weeping over these people uh, who don't have water. He's sitting, and, and He's He He's shown us He's the well of living water. Living water is 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 within Him. We know where it's at. We know how <laughs> how to bring them there. And I, I feel like God has given me this. Mission. 18 years ago, uh, a, a Mexican man, when he saw me, he, um, he, he, he said that he saw a man going from city to city, village to village, uh, and in each of the cities and each of the villages, there, was, uh, there were fountains of, of water, and there were children and uh, people playing and working around the fountains. And he said as he watched, he saw a man go up, uh, uh, the hill, uh, a mountain and at the top of the mountain there was this little village, city and uh, there was this fountain in it and as he looked out over the, the, the villages he saw uh, over the cities and villages he saw many lights, some great some small You know, light, the light of the world in us we are the light of the world and uh, he saw this and he saw seven holes open up in the heavens and he saw the light come down uh, through those holes and fill the fountain. Mm. And the fountain, the fountains, and they, the fountain began to bubble over onto the streets of the city and, and give water and, and give life, uh, living water. And I've experienced this many times in, in Africa, in Mozambique, and uh, I was telling the board just a few minutes ago before uh, I came in here that uh, uh, several times the Spirit of the Lord, uh, uh, when I founded the Dream Project with Julie, you know, I searched out the land, I uh, bought the land, and I uh, got the permits and the licenses of construction to do everything that we did there. And I uh, began building uh, the buildings and everything and putting the fence up and and then the city comes in uh, uh, shortly after that, and they decided to dig a well right in front of our property. And that's where I preached every day. My pulpit is inside the yard on, on our front porch that's looking out across the fence, and the well is right across that. So every day I would preach to the children and my sons in the faith, the disciples, and to the workers, and everybody had to come to the well for water, and they were drinking not only that physical water, but living water every day. Yep. Yep. You see? Yep. And, and one, uh, several of the days, the Spirit of the Lord moved so powerfully, it was just uh, incredible as we worshiped and prayed and uh, called out to Him. The presence of the Lord just seemed to uh, infiltrate, captivate that place, captivate everybody within there and outside of there. Uh, one day I'm thinking of in, in specific, it was so beautiful and so precious. And all the people were out there at the well looking uh, in and hearing 
and uh, desiring to come in and 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 taste and see that the Lord is good, yes. you know, and and uh, as His presence just settled over the place, it was awesome. It was as uh, as I, it was like God opened my eyes to remember the man uh, 18 years ago with that vision. It's come to pass. Hallelujah. It's come to pass. And I'm bringing more, I'm more. I'm going to open up more wells, and I'm going to open up the the, the windows of heaven. Amen. The seven holes in heaven are going to be open, and the light is going to come down into the fountain and bubble over the streets of the city onto the people, the children in the city. Hallelujah. Yes. So, we are now beginning a new project. I've recently been married, and uh, God, I believe that now is the time. Uh, there's, there's been many years uh, in preparation, in waiting, and I believe that now is the time for the birthing of that vision to begin to come forth. It's moving in my spirit. Uh, I just, it's rolling around. It's tumbling around in my spirit. I, I, I want to go out and get them. Yes. They're there. I want to go out and get them. We know the fountain of living water. We have the resources to go out and dig the water for those women uh, and children and men who are drinking at the river that they wash in, they bathe in, and they wash their dishes in, and they wash their clothes in, and they even urinate in. Uh, they're we have the resources and we have the fountain of living water and he won't pull us back. He will send us forth and the, and the, the doors are open and all we have to do is walk in them. And I was reminded of the scripture as we were worshiping about uh, the city of, of God being surrounded uh, in, in the days of the four lepers, you know, and the supply lines were cut off and nothing could get in or get out and all the people were starving and in need and hungry and thirsty and nothing could be done and people were dying. And these four lepers said, hey man, what are we doing just sitting here inside the walls? You know, if we sit here, we die. If we go out there, well, they may let us live. So they went out, you know. They went out and, and they uh, found uh, uh, that that the Lord made a noise in the heavens, uh, a noise in the heavens that uh, uh, routed the enemies and sent them away. <laughs> and, and so they went into their camp and found all of these things, all of these treasures in their camp. And I'm telling you, the, the, the governments of this world may not care. The, governments of, the government of Mozambique may not care that the people are without wells. They may be pocketing money or whatever it is that they're doing and not uh, taking care of the people. But I know one government that does care. Hallelujah. And we're a part of that government. We're ambassadors of that government. We're kings, priests, a holy nation, a royal priesthood yep. who, who, uh, to proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. And I see an opportunity because the governments of this world are failing. They're not taking care of the people of God. They're not doing their responsibility. They want to put it in their own pockets. Well, Jesus wants us to take it out there. And dig those wells for them and sit by the well as he did with that woman and said, hey guys, praise God for this water, you know, God has provided. But let me tell you something that's going to do you a whole lot more good. That's going to last into eternity. That's never going to run dry. And that's what I'm here to present to you today. That this is the call of God on my life. And I, I, I've been an evangelist. Uh, for many years, as he said, I, she said, I carried a 12-foot wooden cross and preached the gospel in different cities in Central and South America. And people, you know, there were fountains back then as well. And, and uh, I walked from city to city, didn't know where my money was coming from, where anything was coming from. And I didn't know where I was going to sleep. And people uh, invited me to, into their own houses, into their own beds, into their children's beds as I was out there sharing uh, the life and the life and the liberty that we have in Christ. 
and, and, and you know, many times up in the city, city, city square where uh, the fountain was, I, I, would get, I would always go to that fountain and, and people would gather around as I preached. And many times people, the, the square was pretty big, but many times the, the whole street was filled, filled with people until uh, the, the um, uh, policeman had to come and say, hey, you know, you're block, they're blocking the whole path. The cars can't come. Uh, uh, bring them inside the square more. So I'm telling you, let's give them water and let's give them the gospel. We want, we want to uh, uh, open up wells of water, fresh water so they can drink, they can eat, they can cook, and they can take care of themselves and not die of di uh, dysentery and diarrhea and all these things. I've watched people die of dysentery and diarrhea. I've watched them suffer and waste away. And uh, it's not fun, folks. And the governments of this world may not care, but we know that he does. So I just want to ask you, will you go with us? Will you help us? You know, will you uh, join hands with us in the the Dream Project, uh, and and uh, uh, there's a new ministry that I founded called Mighty Rain Ministries. We're uh, teaming up. We're working together. We're partnering together. I'm still with the Dream Project. I'm still on the board of the Dream Project, and we want to expand into different areas uh, to carry the gospel and to give Bibles, and uh, we want to give goats and sh uh, chickens and uh, uh, pigs and uh, we want to plant crops and be able to give seeds to the people at the at the introduction. When whenever we get the uh, well dug, uh, no, whenever we get the land, we're going to build a house of prayer there on on the same land, and we're going to be begin meeting and showing the Jesus film and deci preaching and discipling. And we're going to uh, then uh, when on the inauguration day, we're going to give uh, two two chickens. Uh, two goats and, and, and two pigs and some seeds uh, in the months to come, that is, once that, that all starts be reproducing. And uh, we're going to give them Bibles and the gospel. Oh, I don't know how long I've went. I'm, I'm sorry, man. I, I'm a preacher. I don't know if anybody uh, has recognized that or not, but it's the one thing that God has <laughs> really... Uh, gifted me in in the years past. So anyway, God bless you guys. And I, I just want to ask you, will you go with us? Yes. Amen. Will you pray with us? Yes. Will you uh, send people, teams over there? We, want, we don't want to do this alone. We want to do it with teams. We want to uh, be a blessing to them and be a blessing to you guys. We want to work it all together and see it uh, come to pass. See those, those seven holes opened up together and the light coming down into the fountain and flowing over his people there. Come on. So, praise God, man. You know, I could probably continue on, but uh, <clears throat> yeah. It's awesome. Mm. I love you guys. Amen. And uh, I appreciate you. Amen. And all that you've done over the years and all that you're still doing for the Dream Project. And I believe we can make a difference together. Amen. Jesus is with us. Amen. I know I was uh, uh, talking earlier with the board about, you know, uh, also uh, um, Jehoshaphat, when the armies of, God, uh, of the enemy surrounded uh, Israel, Samaria, I believe it was in those days, and when they surrounded them, and uh, the people didn't know what to do, and they were being uh, chastised, they were being jeered at, they were being mocked, and they were all kinds of things going on. Everybody felt defeated, and uh, Jehoshaphat said, "Oh Lord God, all we don't know, you know, all these enemies that you did not let us destroy back then, they back then when we left uh, Egypt, they have come back to kill us now, to reward us by killing us now." And Lord, we don't know what to do with all these enemies that you've uh, that that are surround us, but our eyes are on you. And the, the Lord was like, "That's enough, Jehoshaphat. Tomorrow, go out. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Go out tomorrow, put the praise and worship team before you, and I will rout your enemies." And so they did exactly that, and God routed their enemies. Yes. And so there's armies of enemies surrounding 
uh, every nation in Mozambique and they've taken away the fresh wells of water. They've taken away the, the food supplies. The devil wants to rob, kill, destroy. But Jesus has come to give life and life more abundant. And so I want to be on that team. I want to be in that army and I want to be linked with you guys. And I want to go out and I want to make a difference. I want to put the worship team, the praise and worship team before us. And I want to go out and believe God that he's going to rout those enemies and that the fountains of water are going to come up. And we must do that, guys. Amen. We like Joseph, Jah no, Joseph, Jacob at the at, at the uh, brook, you know, at, uh, out, at when he was fleeing from uh, Esau, his brother. He wrestled with the angel of the Lord and he wrestled with him all night long. And the angel saw that he was not prevailing against him. So he touched his hip and said, uh, you know, and changed the way he walked and said, let me go for the day is, is breaking. And J Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And recently I've come through a great struggle and God has touched my hip and I'm walking a little bit different now. And I know I'm not going to let him go until he blesses me in this. This, this is what he's come to do. Amen. God, Amen. God bless you guys. I'm sorry. Amen. Any questions or anything?